everybody, I am Nico D, today I'm back with the Atomic Pi, so this is an x86 SBC, just like a normal PC, I have gotten this from Ameridroid, so thank you people from Ameridroid, you can find the link down here, where you can buy it at Ameridroid. So this is really cool, this can run any normal operating system for a PC, so this can run Windows 10, this can run Linux, this can run Android, this can run whatever you want to run on it. That is really awesome. I didn't think Windows 10 would run this good on it. So I've installed Windows 10 on the eMMC. The eMMC is only 16 GB, so I had to install Windows Lite, but Windows 10 Lite really works great on this, even on the eMMC. I also needed a USB 3 hub so I can plug my SSD into it and with that I boot Ubuntu. So it is great, I can dual boot with this. I was amazed about how well the games work on this. I didn't expect it to be great for gaming but actually it is rather good. Certainly for older games it really does very well. I've even played some PSP games on it and it does okay with it. I have now used it to build Armbian images and it also does great with that. So it is actually a very handy SBC, it's very small, but the heatsink is big, so you don't need a fan on it. That is great, so it is very silent. This probably has been made to be used in kiosks, it has got loudspeaker amplifiers, so it is also great to be used in an arcade cabinet. You can play many old consoles in emulation with this. It is okay to use as a desktop, but you cannot watch more than 1080p videos. You can turn the resolution, the display resolution to 4K with this board, but nothing works well at 4K of course. So you can do a lot of things with this board. I don't really get how they can sell it this cheap. So it's less than 40 euros. That is very cheap for an x86 computer. Most other x86 boards cost a lot of money, a lot more than ARM boards. So it is great to have this at this price. It has got gigabit ethernet, it has got USB 3, only one port of USB. But you can also add a USB 2 port over here. It also has got Wi-Fi on board, so 5 GHz Wi-Fi and 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. That is very fast and that is re really great for me. So it is a very versatile board. So I'm gonna show you the specs and I'm gonna show you what I've did with it. So here we go! So the first thing we see is the HDMI port. Then we see the Bluetooth antenna connector. Then the volume control connector. The UART. The 2.4 GHz and the 5 GHz Wi-Fi antenna connectors. Then a 20 pin GPIO header. Next to that are two connectors for loudspeakers. So this is amplified, but you do need a beefy PSU for this. Then there are two microphone input connectors. The gigabit ethernet. The USB 3 port. A USB 2 connector. And as last, the SD card reader. On the underside there is a connector for power and on which you also can connect a baseboard. And the CPU is an Intel Atom X5 Z8350 processor with an Intel HD graphics integrated GPU. So here I am in Windows 10 on the Atomic Pi. So this runs really very smooth on the Atomic Pi even on the eMMC. It only takes 10 GB of disk space. So as you see I've got 4 GB left here. I've already installed all the programs that I need for gaming, like DirectX and my PlayStation 3 controller drivers. So I've also installed some games here on the E drive, but the E drive has an SD card of 56 GB. If you use it like this, it's very usable. Just install all the games and big programs on an external storage device, and then you can work really well with Windows 10. Here is one of the games that I've installed on the Atomic Pi. So this is Pro Cycling Manager 2015. I like cycling, so I like these games. I didn't expect this game to work on the Atomic Pi. Even my PC has problems with it, but my PC is getting old also. So this really runs well on it. It is very playable. I've enjoyed playing it again on the Atomic Pi.
and here is Toka Racing Driver 2 for the PSP. It doesn't run perfect, but it is playable. Every ARM SBC has problems playing this game, so it does show that the GPU of the Atomic Pi is rather good. And here we are in Linux, so this is Super Tux Racer. Many SBCs also have problems with this game, so it is cool to be able to play this game well now. Here is the result of the BMW Blender benchmark, so for CPU power you don't need to buy the Atomic Pi. Many other modern ARM SBCs are a lot more powerful. As you see the Atomic Pi did 1 hour 43 minutes over it and it is the slowest of all these SBCs. Here are the transfer speeds. So the EMMC read speed is 140 megabytes per second while the write speed is only 21 megabytes per second. The onboard SD card reader is also rather slow, it's only 31 megabytes per second read and 12.6 megabytes per second write, so it is better to use my USB 3 SD card reader as external storage device instead of the onboard SD card reader. Over USB 3 I get 440 megabytes per second read with my SSD. So the Atomic Pi is being sold for $38 at Ameridroid. Best is to also buy the Baby Break Outboard for power and a PSU and also the RTC battery and the antennas for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You can also buy the large breakout boards, then you've got an extra USB 2 port. I am now using the Atomic Pi to build Armbian images for my ARM SBCs. I do that in Ubuntu Bionic. This can take some time. When it is the first time you build an image, it takes about 2 hours. When you have built the image before, it will take about 40 minutes. So it is great that I don't need to use my PC for that, so I can just play games on my PC while I am building Armbian images. The maximum temperature it reaches when all cores are maxed out for a long time is 61 degrees Celsius, so you don't need to worry about cooling. It does get a bit hotter when you are gaming. So now my conclusion about the Atomic Pi, it's a great x86 SBC, it's a very low price that they're selling it at. I would price this at about $100 instead of $40, so it is a great price for this. The CPU isn't very powerful, it can only be clocked to 1.7 GHz, but the GPU is a lot more powerful than what most ARM SBCs have. So it is really great for gaming, it's very usable as a light server. I would not advise to use this as a desktop PC, but it is possible, it's just not always gonna be the best experience ever. It is a very versatile board, you can do a lot of things with it. It is really perfect to put into an arcade cabinet. The biggest advantage for this is that all the drivers are available for Linux and you can run normal Windows 10 on it, so that is also very handy. I'm amazed about how well Windows runs on it. Even with only 2GB of RAM, it does run great. So I like this board a lot. It's a bit different from all the other ARM SBCs I've reviewed. I will use it a lot for building ambient images and even for recording music because this board is really silent. So that's it for today. I hope you all liked my video. Thank you all for watching. See you all later. Bye!